also. I think so. Okay. But you're still gonna get a. You're still gonna do a worksheet. So one, we need to figure out what size hole that is. Okay. So we got this hole right here. We are gonna hold it there, and we're gonna see which one it lines up to. And this is, it happens to be lining up to a yellow, which says 155. What do you think 155 is? Inches? Oh. <laughs> Millimeters! That's probably it, exactly. So bam, we say, you know what? 155 is going to fit in there really nice. Paul, why don't you take this from me? And swing this down. If you look right behind you, there's a big tower here of different things. 155, it's missing. How could that be? How could it be? Oh, I got it. Right there. Right? So here's our adapter. Okay, now you're going to notice our adapter is going to drop into the wheel. It's going to fit nice and tight, but there's two sides of it. So what if we try this side? Well, this side fits, but it kind of bottoms out. Mm. And so we need to make sure it fits right. Ideally, we want the contact like right, roughly in the middle somewhere. Because if the contact's way out towards the outside, it could kind of pop through. It's way out toward the inside, it might not be centered. So what if it gets, if, if you do an alloy wheel and it's too tight, yeah. What'll happen? Think you could blow it open? No, the pressure of that machine will wedge it into the. Uh, oh, did I get stuck? Get stuck. So how would you get it unstuck? The so machine. Mm. Call it. Yeah. <laughs> call the janitor. Find some device that will drive it out the opposite way. I drove. So you lay it down flat, you break it open, and go pop. Mm. But you don't use another adapter. So you have to get something that's heavy, not a hammer. No one said anything about a hammer, right? So no, we won't be using those. These. If you nick these, they're worthless. I got to yeah. Away. Yeah. Control. You'll notice it's dirty, but it's actually not nicked. It's still very smooth. So this anyway, one's still good. Just make sure if you get stuck, it's no big deal. Yeah. Right? Hey, Alex. Hydraulic so press. <laughs> we got this one. We're hopefully not going to have to press anything. We're just going to set this here for a second. Part two. In fact, I'm going to move it right over here so we can lift this back up. Part two, we need to know what wheel weights we're going to use. So. Did you know there are at least eight types of wheel weights? No, no. Me neither. Because we really only use the same like two or three. However, this wheel is going to take a certain type of weight. So this is the way I'm going to recommend it. A, you can get this tool and you can try to like kind of line it up to the profile of the wheel. And you'll notice like that's definitely a no. That one's close. No. No, wait a minute, look at this one. That black one looks like it's gonna work. That black one actually follows the contour of the wheel. And it says P, so will you remember that? P. I don't care how you remember it, and I don't really even wanna know. Just remember it, P. So, we've done all the little measurements on the wheel, so here's our next step. We still have our adapter, right? So I'm gonna swing this tire up. Nice and easy. You notice I'm not banging it around. In fact, you just barely to touched it. Oh, what's wrong with that form? Everything. Oh, no. Okay, so I have it on there. But you notice it's not tight. This is one thing that a lot of people don't know about the machine. This machine doesn't have the type that you crank up. So we're going to use this one. So we're going to slide this one on. You ready? Huh. Oh, did you hear it ratchet? So you got to have it in the right spot. So when you go to release it, you squeeze these two. When you go to put it in, you have to have it indexed correctly so it grabs. Feel how it grabbed? All right, so that's the first step. Now I'm going to come over here, lift up the wheel, drive the adapter in, support it, tap the pedal. Auto clamp is the two tap. Thank you. Great reminder. And now, like, what I like to do, I just like to give it a little spin, and you look like that tire's going pretty straight, right? So we know it's in there. So if it didn't sit right, it could be wobbling all over the place. Now, this machine, there's a couple things we need to know. The diameter of the wheel, the width, the back spacing, and all these things. Well, you're really spoiled. You know why? No, not chicken cut. We're gonna bring these down, and you can see where they're sitting. Not on the very lip of the rim, not on the here, but where the bead is, here. So we're going to bring these down, right like that. In fact, it shows it in the picture. You guys see that? Yeah. So, who could guess which one backspacing is? Backspacing. What do you think that means? 
This stay from the inside to the outside? We're gonna look at that, right? See how it says 167? Right, yeah. That's kind of like how far away it is, right? Mm. It's a hold over to the old machine. Mm. You look at that one over in the corner. The older hunter machines, you need three dimensions. Width. You want to go look at that one so you understand? Let's go rim, look. The diameter of the rim and how far away the rim is set up the machine. And that actually has a, a ruler on there. You had to enter the number of the Yeah. On the You'd measure it and type it in. Mm -hmm. So you're spoiled. And this type also has the clamp that you put on here and you tighten up like this. Mm -hmm. Now there's one the wheel, other right? tool. The one that measures the rim? Yeah, the one that measures the width of the wheel. So we're lucky because we don't have to do all that on this one. You need to know one function on this machine. Yes. I, I always leave this so you don't have to touch this button. Okay. If you just grab the data set arm and put it out there, it should automatically sense that's what you're doing. And it did. And that's called... Um, well, you'll see what it's called here in a minute. But when you put those back, now I need to touch the button here. Yeah, but don't right now. Okay. Much, I want to demonstrate something because okay, it drives my kids crazy. Um, if somebody actually presses this button, yeah, you'll see choices of how you can. Oh, okay. So we just want to stay out of there. We want to leave it on no, auto. No, no, you want to leave it on auto. Yeah. But I want to show you what the option could be. Sorry, I'm under pressure. Of Give me a second. It's the nervousness of the camera. Yeah, the camera's got the man nervous. There. So people do this, they'll start to balance. Yeah. And then they'll think, I have to set the dimensions. And I remember him saying something about, oh, there it is. What kind of weight am I going to put on the car? Am I going to oh. use hammer on weight, stick on weights, and a dollar? Anyone knows what that means? No. Mm. You'll see it. Nope. It means it's this. So if you press this, you have, have several on, different right? ways you can put weights on the. Is that Assembly. one of the ones that go on the inside? It's called patch weights. <laughs> and we don't do it. And I don't know many people that do. I think yeah. aircraft do it, though. Say the tip? But maybe uh, they don't. I don't know for sure. Because you really don't want a wheel weight coming off of an airline when it lands at you know 600 miles an hour. Yeah, they put them inside. Anyway, you have the ability to hammer on the weights on the inside and the outside. You can put hammer on weights on the inside and a stick on way in there. Or you can do two stick ons. Mm -hmm. Now this one you do hammer, hammer on, and, and the kind of weight you use depends on what your shop policy is and how you view it. My personal feeling is wheel weight should be used but not seen on alloy wheels. Yeah, nice one, sure. But if you leave it on auto, this machine is smart enough to know that if you lift the data set arm, which this is called, and you, you'll know that after you do the worksheet, and you lift it up here, it knows you're doing hammer on weights. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean. I hate to interrupt, but I always do. <coughs> Drives Mr. Kelly crazy. Bless you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But you, there you have a lot of knowledge. No, you're doing that thing that we were always taught to do, and that's respect your elders. <laughs> no, no, I'm so telling you. So when you grab if this I thing, I don't care about respect the hand. And you go here, the machine knows you're putting on a hammer on weight. If you return the data set arm gently back to its home, and now pick it up and put it down here, mm -hmm. it thinks you're putting on a stick-on weight right there. Oh, okay. So it just changed the stick-ons. We can see so it right now. when it's on auto-detect, it auto-detects where you're putting the data set arm. That's nice. Had no idea. There's one other little function that you won't see, but let's say I'm balancing a tire and I'm using stick-on weights, which I would not do on this wheel. Mr. Kelly will step on the pedal once, and then he'll step. I'm going to put a stick-on weight on, on this pretend rim. It's an alloy wheel. And then go ahead. And now it's going to ask me in the upper left hand corner to rotate the assembly to where a spoke would be. So if you pretend to put it behind the spoke, There's which there are none spoke. on here, yeah. and you step on the pedal, it's now going to say rotate this to another spoke, which he would pretend to do. And then he would say step. Here. And what that would do is allow you to put stick on weights whenever you put them on and it would stick it behind the spoke so you don't see it through the outside. And then when you bring in your second wheel and you mount it, all you have to do is put it on the machine and hit this button that says set the new location of your spoke. And then all you have to do is roll this out and set it where the spoke is and hit and you're ready to go. This machine is idiot proof. <laughs> When, you, when he gets done showing you all the stuff and you spin it, it's going to tell you where to put the weights with the laser light. 
All the measurements, right? So now it did. Yes, it did. Yep, it just it just measured the wheel. Hey, hey, what's the next step? Turn to the wheel. Oh, close the hood. That's right. Oh no, we need to set the tire pressure. But it's not connected, remember? Okay, so we're shooting for 30. Machine's automatically do, go, adjusting it to 30. You guys tell me the tire pressure you want instead of 30. 32. Okay, we'll roll it up just like this. How about we go to 32? 60. No, we're not going to do 60. 35. How about we just call it a 32 so that way you guys can see whatever the tire pressure is going to be set to, just say no. How do you know what to set the tire pressure to on a car? Where? A, that's the answer, on the B pillar, near, in the door panel, there. Not on the side of the tire. On the side. It's a 60. Why down over there? Not on the side of the tire. So, at this point we're ready to balance, wouldn't you say? Now, it's saying measuring tire stiffness, you know why? Because we have the road force roller on. It's going to come down and it's going to simulate the road pressure. This is the best type of balancer. Balancers that don't do that, you can balance it, but it's still going to vibrate because it's not measuring the tire dynamically under pressure. So here we go. We're running it. Ah, oh, interesting. Okay. Now we're going to lift the hood. Now there's a couple things you need to notice. Number one, do you see this thing right here? It looks like a spring. That's telling you how much road force there is. How much mm, kind of out of balance there is with road force pressure. On it. And so, look at that. Two, two pounds is really good. You see there's a little cutoff right here at 26. Let's say that we're at 27. That's bad. Actually, a lot of places would replace the tire. This has a function where we can actually do index the tire or uh, match the tire. And so it would have you actually follow on screen instructions. You would make a mark on the tire. It tell you to make, mark the tire, then it's gonna tell you to mark the rim, then it's gonna tell you to re-index it. We bring it to the machine, we break it down, we spin them and line the marks up, then we come back over and we redo the whole procedure. But two pounds is really low, so we're really good. Now, what the heck is this all about? Zero is good, right? 0.75. What are we going to do now? Which weight? How about uh, this weight? Oh, we need to find one that's a P, don't we? So we're looking. 125. Here's some junky ones. That one's going to be a no. This one's probably too big. You guys keep looking. Treasure hunt. Oh, you go to the nice big pile there? P. Where's the P at? Oh, MC right there. Is it the Star Spark? It's YouTube. 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 It's the scale. Does it feel like a 75? It feels like one. <laughs> Here's definitely a 75. We can read it well. Did you guys put it on there? Does it say P on it? Okay. Why won't it move? so weird. It, do, it does it for you. It's just going to bring it up to where you want it. 
This is the way it's saying now it's angry. Because we tried to move it. What'd you say? The weight does say it. This one's pretty rough, but you can read it right in the middle. It does say P. 75 and it says P actually. How do we know it was a P? You guys remember? You maybe get the chart. On this machine. Yeah, that's right. We've used the chart. Yep. You know what's sad? This wheel weight's kind of already a little too spread out. Now in real life you'd use the new ones, but you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna make it work. Mm -hmm. This tool can do a few things. See how I just pinched it back down? Tighten it up a little bit? Don't tell anybody what you saw here. Would you say that's right on the money? No. Yeah. What? <laughs> that's on the money! <laughs> so now what do we do? Close the hood again. <laughs> Up by three millimeters. There's no way that tire is going to vibrate. It's in balance and the road force is really good. It's, good. it's perfect. So now, we're on the car. now we'd be ready to go on the car. So we're going to we're gonna lift it. Oh, it doesn't run it again? It just did it. It doesn't have to re road force it because we know the road force, but it just spun just the balance on it. So that baby's ready. So now what do we do? Come off. Hit the clutch. Gear shift. We got an F that. Gotta shift Right? Here. And here. Alright, carefully pull it off. Ready to go. Who wants to do it next? Who's up? Me. 